Hello dear friends, today I am going to discuss antimalarials wherein I am going to cover the etiology of malaria, the various classifications of antimalarial compounds, their SAR, their synthesis, their mechanism of action. In the etiology, I am going to discuss the causative organism, the symptoms, signs and the life cycle of the malaria. Malaria as you know is once again an important transmittable disease across the world, particularly the third world countries and causing lot of casualties. Today over a million uh, people die every year and more than 200 people are affected by this deadly disease. This disease which once was thought to be eradicated after World War II is now back and in the resistant form and the most deadly is the cerebral malaria. And this parasite of malaria enters the human beings through the bite of female anaphylis mosquito it immediately enters first the liver cells then comes to the blood and then it shows its symptoms like chills fevers nausea vomiting etc and on a large scale it breaks the rbc's which causes the chills rigors etc and the fever and it makes the person very weak as you can see the world map, mostly the third world countries that is particularly Asia, Africa and Latin America is affected. Most affected have been shown in red, others in dark orange and orange colors and slightly in yellow and brown colors. You can see India is also there on the map. The etiology of the malaria is due to the three plasmodial species. Uh, like uh, four plasmodial species like falciparum, malaria, vivax, ovel and falciparum is the most deadly of these. Its malaria is characterized by attacks of high fever, chills, nausea and vomiting as we discussed. It goes through three stages. First stage lasting one hour is a cold stage which is just latitude headache, nausea and chilly sensation with rigors. Then for 2 to 6 hours the patient feels hot and the headache becomes intense, pulse rate becomes high, this is a hot stage. Next comes another 2 to 4 hour session of sweating stage, profuse sweating is there, pulse drops down and patient feels relieved. Now this sequence of these three stages keep on re repeating for two days. It is tertian fever when the fever is caused by vivax and ovel species. While it repeats after every three days, this is quartan fever when it is caused by the plasmodial malaria and it is more repeated with plasmodium falciparum recurring every 36 to 48 hours. And these attacks actually are the consequence of release of high quantity of merozoites into the bloodstream. A few terms we should understand relapse versus recurrence. Uh, recurrence can be classified as recrudescence when symptoms return after a symptoms free period and uh, this is due to parasites surviving in the blood and result of inadequate or effective, ineffective treatment. Relapse is after the parasites have been eliminated from the blood by the drug therapy. After a particular period, some of the parasites become dormant to go and stay in the liver which are called as hypnozoid form and then they suddenly make their existence felt. Relapse is very common with ovel and vivax infections while well, recrudescence is commonly seen with plasmodium falciparum. We need to understand more uh, 
terminologies in the malaria treatment in the next slides one is a clinical cure that means all the symptoms are to be removed or terminated after the malarial fever the drug therapy is concentrated on this so clinically there is no diagnosis radical cure both the forms are to be eliminated in clinical cure only blood forms are eliminated but in radical cure the liver as well as the blood forms are to be removed you will understand these forms when we study the life cycle the causal prophylaxis that is to eradicate the pre erythrocytic phase that is the liver forms which are mainly the cause of the infection the liver forms actually release the blood forms suppressive prophylaxis that is the pre erythrocytic stage which is the cause of malarial infection and clinical attacks is the target for this purpose so this is a again a, these two types of prophylaxis are followed in case of clinical cure the erythrocytic schizonticides are used that is schizonticides are the drugs which kill the erythrocytic forms or the forms which reside in the blood or the rbc and they are classified into two categories high efficiency like artemisinin chloroquine amodiaquine quinine mefloquine halofentrine lumifrantine and atovaquone <clears throat> and the low efficacy are the proguanil pyrimethamine sulfonamides and the antibiotic tetracyclines and clindamycin radical cure it eliminates both hepatic and erythrocytic stages that is vivex and ovel erythrocytic schizonticide is given along with tissue schizonticide so chloroquine with primaquine if chloroquine resistance is observed then instead of chloroquine quinine doxycycline or clindamycin are given with primaquine third approach is artemisinin based combination therapy with primaquine so the first part is the blood schizonticide and second is the pre erythrocytic or liver schizonticide causal prophylaxis is the pre erythrocytic phase which is the cause of malarial infection and clinical attacks is made the target and primaquine serves the best till date for this purpose suppressive prophylaxis is schizonticides which suppress the erythrocytic phase and attack of malarial fever can be uh, eliminated and this is used as prophylactics uh, clinical disease disappears chloroquine no longer is used in india now for this purpose because lot of chloroquine resistance is observed but mefloquine and doxycycline are used mefloquine weekly 250 mg suffices so the goal is to prevent and treat clinical attack of malaria to completely eradicate the parasite from the patient's body to reduce the human reservoir of infection cut down transmission to mosquito <clears throat> so the life cycle of malaria now we are going to see distinctly it is into two parts the sexual cycle of the plasmodia which occurs in the mosquito and the asexual cycle occurs in the human beings the knowledge of this life cycles is very essential in understanding and designing the anti malarial drugs treatments drugs mostly used are acting on this asexual cycle of the parasite taking place in the human beings so for convenience we broadly classify this asexual cycle into two phases exoerythrocytic or liver phase which occurs outside the erythrocytes also known as tissue phase and the drugs acting are called as tissue schizonticides the erythrocytic phase which clinically is detected more easily occurs in the erythrocytes or the rbcs and the also called as blood phase and drugs acting at this level are called as uh, erythrocytic schizonticides or blood schizonticides <clears throat> in short the malaria is transmitted by the bite of infected female anopheles mosquito 
during feeding it injects it takes the blood meal from the human beings it injects sporozoites which circulate to the liver first and rapidly infect hepatocytes causing a symptomatic liver infection that is hepatic phase and this is somehow absent in the plasmodial malaria species then it these sporozoites develop in the liver to merozoites which then get released from the liver and rapidly go and attack the erythrocytes or rbc and to start the asexual erythrocytic stage of infection that is responsible for human disease multiple rounds of erythrocytic development with production of merozoites occurs and that they then are ready to invade additional erythrocytes and this is a chain reaction and large numbers of circulating parasites and leading to clinical illness is observed these merozoites are subsequently released by in mass rupture of large number of erythrocytes and this is observed as a clinical malarial attack some erythrocytic parasites of these develop into sexual gametocytes which are infectious to the mosquitoes allowing completion of the life cycle and infection of others so when the mosquito draws again the blood from infected human beings this sexual gametocytes preferably or preferentially enter the mosquito in plasmodium vivax and plasmodium ovale parasites also form dormant liver hypnozoites some of these uh, blood schizonticides or merozoites get converted into dormant form go back to the liver and stay there these are not getting killed by any drugs and to some unknown response they suddenly again respond and uh, again start behaving like uh, exoerythrocytic normal exoerythrocytic forms and this leads to the relapses of illness even after clinically you feel that malaria is removed from that patient so here we can see that the life cycle starts the mosquito bite so first it enters the livers okay now this schizonts and uh, this schizonts again finally becomes merozoites and in last scale they come and invade the rbcs where they become erythrocytic schizonts some of them attack more of the rbcs some of them uh, get converted into a sexual uh, to sexual gametocytes or sexual forms <clears throat> and some of them return back to the liver to become hypnozoites okay so this is a life cycle of malaria parasite in brief <clears throat> this detail life cycle is also given and uh, you can actually study it in details and the subsequent figure is also given in the next slide like uh, the anaphylis mosquito during its life cycle uh, uh, injects the sporozoites in the human being or man they rapidly disappear in the human circulation and invade the liver parenchyma cells where they undergo a sexual uh, division called as schizogony each sporozoite develops in the liver cell and undergoes repeated nuclear divisions to form a schizont or called a merozoite and this is called as a primary tissue stage or pre erythrocytic stage it takes 6 to 12 days and in different different species it takes different different days till this point no symptoms are observed as far as it is in the primary tissue stage then suddenly these parenchymata cells burst open and the merozoites are released into the blood some merozoites reinvade liver cells and continue to undergo further a sexual division this is called as exoerythrocytic stage or secondary tissue stage 
these forms are called as exoerythrocytic forms and responsible for the relapses of malaria even after the blood cycle is suppressed. Other merozoites invade RBCs and initiate a cycle of erythrocytic schizogony. The young merozoites grow within the RBCs to form tropozoites which further mature into erythrocytic schizons and then rupture the RBCs. The malarial pigment which is called as hemozoin is produced by the breakdown of hemoglobin of the RBCs and liberated in the bloodstream to attack further new fresh RBCs. The production and release of asexual erythrocytic forms into bloodstream are responsible for fever and other symptoms of malaria mainly the rigors and chills. Fresh invasion of new RBCs and asexual development of new merozoites keeps on continuing till this stage is not attacked by drugs. Some of the daughter merozoites fail to reproduce asexually and different into sexual forms as males and female forms which are known as gametocytes which then when the mosquito again rebites the infected person are sucked by from the fresh blood of the host and any and this survive and start cycle in the mosquito. Other asexual forms get destroyed in the mosquito stomach. The female and male gametocytes in the mosquito undergo male macrogametes and female macrogametes division. These male female macrogametes conjugate and zygote is formed. This zygote appears to alter its shapes and become worm like and is called as ookinate. It ookinate enter this stomach wall of the mosquito to form the round shaped oocyst which undergoes nuclear division and enlargement and finally ruptures to release thousands of mobile infective sporozoites which enter the blood cavity of the mosquito and migrate to its salivary glands. The infective sporozoites then enter the vertebrate host and when the mosquito takes a host blood mill the whole cycle rebegins. So here the blood meal my mosquito, okay, and uh, now you can see mosquito attacks the man, sporozoites, schizons, uh, they become merozoites, nuclear division and enlargement becomes merozoites, some of them stay back as hypnozoites. This is primary tissue stage. Then this schizons enter the RBCs, invasion of the RBCs. Some of them mature to merozoites, become tropozoites, enlarge, again give large number of schizons. Some continue to do this. Factory start, keeps on going and army is released. This is erythrocytic stage. And then after there is a also called as a secondary tissue stage okay this is a primary tissue stage secondary tissue stage this is erythrocytic or blood stage and this is then some of them sexually differentiate so this is a and these gametes are released and these gametes are sucked by the mosquito as male gametes and female gametocytes they become macrogametes form zygote who can eat Oocyst, infective sporozoites, go to the body cavity, migrate to the salivary glands, next bite and this keeps on continuing. This is a detailed life cycle of the malarial parasite. So you can see from malaria it becomes to human and this is again very nicely explained pictorially how it is transmitted. Okay, erythrocytic cycle, liver stage exoerythrocytic cycle, sporozoids injected into human beings and parasites mature in the mosquito, parasites undergo sexual reproduction and this continues. We come to the classification of antimalarial drugs based on the action at particular stage of the plasmodial life cycle as well as their chemical structure as well as their mechanism of action. These three aspects three categories of classifications are described here first is the biological action uh, out of the based or that is the action on the life cycle base that is the biological classification in green color mixed biological and chemical classification that is 
taking case uh, mechanism of action also into consideration and third is the chemical particularly on the based on the chemical structure of the drugs so first let us see the chemical classification you have four amino quinolines eight amino quinolines quinoline methanols phenanthrin methanol artemisin in derivatives anti metabolites antibiotics and amino pyrimidines or dhfr inhibitors these are the main categories one by one we are seeing the four amino quinolines most important is chloroquine hydroxychloroquine amodiaquine so you have to actually visualize and remember these structures particularly of chloroquine nowadays hydro hydrochloroquine or hydroxychloroquine has also become very very uh, famous due to its some proposed action on the covid virus amodiaquine is another drug of choice these are all blood schizonticides eight amino quinolines primaquine palmaquine tefenoquine you can see the if you see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 while well, here you could see 1 2 3 4 so these are four amino and this is eight amino and you can also see how this 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 particular is 1 2 3 4 4 carbon chain and the fifth branch so five carbon uh, spacer between the two amino groups and have two diethyl moieties so this is particularly called as novel damine um, uh, named by hext and uh, most of the amino side chains are permutation combinations of this length while here almost similar novel damine only you can see difference is it is in the 8th position and the substituent in chloroquine was chloro here it is methoxy you have the natural source quinine quinidine mainly these two alkaloids there are synchonine synchonidine also but anti-malarial purpose quinine is used from ages uh, very sparsely because of its toxicity but sometimes when resistance to uh, chloroquine is observed quinine is again used and this is quinoline methanols this is mefloquine synthetic analog you can see cf3 here and here you have bioguanides these are old drugs proguanil and uh, its cyclized form pro is the pro drug so proguanil cyclos form is cyclogonyl and uh, from this may be evolved the structure through drug design of pyrimethamine due to world war uh, during the world war and uh, Hitchings, Rose and other scientists they received the uh, Barbara Roth they received the Nobel Prize for the discovery of THFR inhibitors particularly the anti-malarials There are the sesquiterpene lactones, which are very potent. These are, they have a very typical tri ether linkage and they have a, a very typical mechanism of action of free radical uh, attack on the plasmodial parasite. These come from the Artemisin in plants, Artemisia longa and these uh, artemisinin, artesunate, artemether, artether are the examples so these are originated by Chinese medicine there are some amino alcohols like halofantrine, lumefantrine there are naphtheridines, pyronaridine is one of the example, naphthaquinones, atovacone uh, some sulfonamides are also found useful in treatment of anti-malarial uh, in treatment as anti-malarials however they are to be used in the combination therapy along with uh, pyrimethamine antibiotics also found effective mainly tetracyclines and doxycyclines and sometimes clindamycin biological classification is based on the stage at which a drug acts so first is 
the plasmodial life cycle stage that is the tissue schizonticides and these particular compounds are called as primary coagulant prophylactics which inhibit the growth of preerythrocytic stages of the parasites in the liver proguanil and pyrimethamine are either used alone or in combination with sulfonamides as coagulant prophylactics so they they cut down at the cause only of the infection and they eradicate the exoerythrocytic form or liver tissue stage preventing the parasites entry into the blood they are useful for prophylaxis hypnozoeticides they kill the dormant long living stiff liver stages which are called as hypnozoids and are used as anti relapse drugs in pyvax and pyovil where the propensity is high and eight amino quinolins particularly primaquine is used for this purpose blood schizonticides or suppressives these are most widely used they act on the blood or rbc forms or erythrocytic stage generally for clinical cure chloroquine and quinine are most important they are used as suppressive prophylactics quinine of course due to toxicity not much use but chloroquine is very this thing used and uh, gametocytosides destroy the sexual stages of the parasites in the blood uh, particularly of the falciparum this is a strategy to prevent the spreading of the infection primaquine is particularly used for this purpose sporontocytes inhibitory action on the development of oocysts and sporozoites in the mosquito so pyrimethamine and cycloguanil and radical curatives destroy both exoerythrocytic and the erythrocytic forms tissue and blood forms combination of chloroquine and primaquine so this is the bio biological classification so pictorially it has been nicely uh, explained so these are the sporontocytes okay uh, which uh, before reaching the liver they are or uh, pre erythrocyte uh, pre um, what you can say uh, the before entering the primary coagulant prophylactics they can be called or pre liver stages or exoerythrocytic forms and uh, pyrimethamine proguanil are useful for this these are some hypnozoids which kill the dormant forms tissue schizonticides particularly eight amino quinolins they kill the liver forms blood schizonticides particularly four amino quinolins and quinine they kill the blood forms gametocytosides and combination of these two are the radical curatives nicely explained in this figure alternatively you have got the third classification mixed chemical and biological classification eight amino quinolins particularly effective on dormant parasitic stages like gametocytes and hypnocytes that is the liver forms primaquine example is there anti metabolites active on all growing stages of the parasite pyrimethamine cycloguanil sulfonamide sulfones they act as anti metabolites they mimic some important metabolites useful to the mosquito fool it and uh, deprive it of its biosynthesis of important metabolites blood schizonticides are active against only blood stages of malarial parasites namely quinine quinidine chloroquine amodiaquin mefloquine and nine amino acridines let us see the malaria chemotherapy acr of the major classes you have this structure activity relationship of the cinchona alkaloids you can see there are four five major points in this and uh, all four of these naturally occurring al alkaloids are active antimalarials the secondary oh at c9 is essential for the activity this is a secondary hydroxy group is essential so it is ticked as essential presence of methoxy position these positions are numbered sequentially and these are numbered 1 dash 2 dash 3 dash like that okay so 1 dash 2 dash 3 dash 4 dash 5 dash 6 dash 7 dash 8 dash or 1 dash 2 dash 3 dash 4 like that so the presence of the methoxy group at 8 position 
is not very essential but if it is replaced by the halogen that it enhances the activity introduction of phenyl group at position 2 dash enhances the activity but best observed with the cf3 group like the mefloquin Asymmetry positions at 3, 4 are not essential. This bridge head not required. Let us see the SAR of the 4 amino quinolins. Most important is the 4 amino quinolin backbone is very important. It is the right template to trap the heme ion of the plasmodium. The 7 chloro atom is also essential for the formation of imazoin formation. 2 to 5 carbon atom linkage is also very essential of the novel amine. Side chain amino and quinoline nitrogen provide the right pH required for the drug action. Substitution at 3 position reduces the activity. The structure activity relationship of the 8 amino quinolines. Presence of quinoline ring is necessary. If uh, the fuse pyrimidine is converted into piperidine, means if you hydrogenate it, you saturate it, it leads to fall in the activity. Methoxy group, if reflexed by ethoxy or methyl group compounds, lose the activity. So, methoxy is required. Mm. Introduction of halogen at this position may lead to toxicity. People try to enhance the activity, but it leads to toxicity. The pentyl side chain at the end gives maximum activity. Any decrease or reduction in this uh, side chain will cause the reduction in activity. The branched 8 amino side chain, when converted into straight chain, here the branch, if you remove and make it straight chain, like in pentaquin, uh, the lesser anti malarial activity is observed. Uh, structure activity relationship of the cisco terpene lactones like artemisinin, artesunate, artemether, artether. So, based on artemisinin, artemisinin serves as a lead compound for development of new anti malarials. The lactone group can be reduced, uh, this can be converted into OH and to form dihydroartemisinin, which is useful as a precursor for synthetic products that are more water and oil soluble okay this this can be further alkylated to artemether and artether and more potent and more water soluble the hydroxyl group can be alkylated to give these things esterification of the hydroxyl with succinic acid gives artesunate so this is first hydrogenated to OH then this is either esterified or etherified. The presence of the trioxin moiety is essential for activity, very important. And uh, artemisinin analogs such as deoxy artemisinin, uh, which do not contain the endoperoxide, if you remove this, uh, deoxy artemisinin, biological activity is gone. This is next is the same which we discussed, like reducing it to the OH and derivatizing it. We also have the structure activity relationship for the other important class 2,4-diamino pyrimidines that is dihydrofolate reductase inhibitors, pyrimethamine that is a 2,4-diamino 5-chlorophenyl, 5-parachlorophenyl, 6-ethyl pyrimidine. Hmm. This is very important drug. Um, Increase activity if electron donating group was present in the sixth position of the pyrimidine ring. Okay, so the sixth position, ethyl is optimal an electron donating group and with two carbon length it is the best 
if you make it methyl or propyl activity drops. Increased activity if chlorine is present at the para position of the 5 phenyl ring. This is very important. If you re re repress it with electron donating group, it falls. Similarly, if you try to put a spacer between these two rings, either O, para chlorophenoxy or phenoxy, or methyl, like in trimethoprim, trimethoxybenzyl, if you try to convert this to benzyl, activity was. Free amino groups at 2 and 4 positions are very important and essential for anti malarial and DHF are in nutric. And the, of course, the mononuclear pyrimidine nucleus is also very essential. So, these are the most important points in the SAR of these various classes. We will discuss some major anti malarial drugs particularly chloroquine, amodiaquine, primaquine, palmaquine, quinine, mefloquine, quinacrine, cycloguanil, proguanil, pyrimethamine, um, artemisunate, artemether, atovocone. And uh, we are going to cover the synthesis of chloroquine, primaquine and pyrimethamine. Chloroquine is the rapidly acting exo erythrocytic schizonticide against all plasmodia including the falciparum controls most of the clinical attacks within a day or two. It has of course no effect on the exo and pre-erythrocytic stages that is the liver phases and cannot prevent the relapses. It is only used for clinical cure and most importantly it is cheap. Its mechanism of action is it actively concentrates in the sensitive intra-erythrocytic plasmo plasmodia by accumulating in the acidic vessels, vesicles of the parasites and its weakly basic nature raises the vesicular pH and thereby interferes with the degradation of hemoglobin by parasitic lysosomes. The polymerization of toxic heme to non-toxic parasite pigment hemozoin is inhibited by formation of chloroquine heme complex. It forms a complex with the essential heme which is actually required uh, for the parasite pigment hemozoin to exert its action that is trapped and the hemozoin is deprived of that. Heme itself or its complex with chloroquine then damages the plasmodial membranes, clumping of pigment and changes in parasite members, membranes follow and leads to its death. Other related 4-aminoquinoline uh, that is amodiaquine and of course quinoline methanols like quinine mefloquine, rumefrantine act in an analogous manner and uh, chloroquine is widely known as lariago by Ipka in India. Lariago comes from malariago. This is a synthesis of chloroquine which starts with metachloroaniline and ethyl oxaloacetate to form an intermediate through the nucleophilic attack of the amino group at the carbonyl carbon and then at high temperature this is cyclized to the pyridinone and then it is the sister group is hydrolyzed under alkaline uh, pH and then it is decarboxylated by heating in mineral oil at very high temperature then it is chlorinated to the 4 chloro and finally this is a metathetical dismissment of the chloro atom with the novel damine this happens in boiling phenol or hydrogen catalysis and chloroquine is observed. Chloroquine is generally the acidic catalysis generally is used as sulfuric acid so you get chloroquine sulfate or phosphoric acid chloroquine phosphate. Another 4 amino quinoline is amodiaquine. It is highly suppressive in plasmodium vivax and plus uh, falciparum infections. It is found to be highly suppressive and 3 to 4 times as active as quinine, identical mechanism action like chloroquine and uh, it's also a cheap and effective drug and the synthesis starts with the para hydroxy acetinolide and uh, formylation and uh, manic reaction occurs here to form the 
methyl dimethyl diethyl amino substituent finally this acetanilide is hydrolyzed to the aniline and uh, this is then treated with uh, as an this is now treated as an amine to use in the metathetical displacement of the 4 chloro of the dichloroquinoline and here you get the amodiaquin primaquine is a drug of choice for treatment of hepatic forms and relapsing vivax and oval forms of malaria and will produce a radical cure of the condition it is combined with chloroquine to eradicate the erythrocytic stages of malaria it is not given for a long term treatment however because it has on prolonged treatment it is potentially toxic and causes sensitivity and very serious side reactions uh, it can also cause as hemolytic anemias it is highly effective against gametocytes and hematocytes this is synthesis of primaquine starts with anisole and its acetylation which is anisole is converted into uh, para anisidine through nitration reduction and acetylated to paramethoxy acetinalide again further nitration to introduce a nitro group and this under crop synthesis uh, leads to the formation of uh, uh, 8 amino 6 methoxyquinoline and uh, then the Gabriel synthesis follows thalamide with 14 dibromopentane. So you get the uh, N alkyl uh, thalamide, the bromo derivative. And this bromo derivative then uh, combines with the amino and displaces one hydrogen. So now you have got the 8 amino quinoline uh, it thal thal thalidomido uh, amino quinoline and then the hydrazinolysis of this uh, breaks it open and uh, uh, this goes as a thalic acid and you get this free amine here so you can see the novel diamond moiety here. This is primaquine. Palmaquine is another 8 amino quinoline. Uh, it used to be, uh, it is very closely related to primaquine and it used to be also used alongside uh, primaquine, uh, particularly uh, against the relapsing hypnozoids of vivax and ovel. It is also somehow found to be effective surprisingly against the erythrocytic stages also but because of its more toxicity and less efficient efficacy against the liver stages or exoerythrocytic stages it is uh, no longer used and primaquina happens to be the drug of choice by the WHO. Quinine, of course, is the age-old drug from the bark of Cinchona. Actually, anti-malarial history uh, leads to the uh, age-old days of a Chinese emperor whose sons suffered the malarial fever. The royal uh, doctor prescribed the herbal medicine of the bark of um, Cinchona and he got cured. And then that led to uh, give an impetus for further research and this is how quinine was isolated by the European scientists from the cinchona box along with quinine three more alkaloids quinidine, cinchonine, cinchonidine were observed and quinine has multiple other actions. It is somehow very active against the blood form but inactive against the pre-erythrocytic forms. 
it has got a gametocidal action when given along with primaquine. Um, it is uh, some, somehow less effective than chloroquine but more toxic so it is not preferred much because of its toxicity however when there is a uh, resistance to chloroquine developed by the plasmodium falciparum uh, chloroquine is suggested it is uh, effective in terminating the acute attack of falciparum malaria but cannot be able to prevent the recrudescence that is it is not able to clear the parasites completely mechanism action is almost similar to chloroquine and uh, same it uh, inhibits the polymerization of heme to imazoin and uh, the free heme increases or heme quinine complex like heme chloroquine complex damages the parasite membranes and kills it however it is intensely bitter irritant causes nausea vomiting epigastric discomfort causes local necrosis when given by injection and most importantly it is cardiodepressant and arrhythmic antiarrhythmic based on the quinoline alkaloids one very good discovery is of mefloquine very potent drug related to quinine but more effective than quinine particularly because of this trifluoromethyl groups and uh, fd accrued it in late 90s which is particularly a drug of choice for malaria suppression and particularly against chloroquine resistant strains it is very effective in curing multi drug resistant beef palsiparum malaria acts at the erythrocytic stage uh, however the plasmodia has also started developing resistance to certain extent to this drug this is old drugs amino acridins particularly used in the african countries but somehow uh, they still find some use particularly when the plasmodia of the falciparum species have developed strains to the traditionally used drug like chloroquine etc these come these drugs come handy but uh, they have some serious cns and fatal drug interactions one of these drugs is of course the quinacrine also called as atabrine or mepacrine and it has got several uses it can be actually termed as a benzo fused uh, chloroquine this is chloroquine and a benzene ring is fused to it uh, but due to side effects mental disturbances brain effects skin eruptions skin coloring turning yellow it has been very controlled use mm, it is an erythrocytic schizonticides and also effective gametocytes the important class is of course the tetrahydrofolate synthase inhibitors or dihydrofolate reductase inhibitors you can call them pyrimethamine is uh, the most effective and widely used drugs effective erythrocytic schizonticides against all human malarias also acts on the exoerythrocytic primary exoerythrocytic stage and it is generally used as a combination therapy to overcome the resistance along with the sulfonamides and antibiotics synthesis starts with paragloro benzyl cyanide and with ethyl acetoacetate or ethyl propionate sorry in presence of sodium ethoxide so you get a cyanoketone which re, which uh, then um, is methylated o methylated with diazomethane and then through the principal synthesis involving vanadin the pyrimidine diamino pyrimidine is formed mechanism of action is uh, the malaria protozoa are unable to use the host pyrimidine nucleosides and must synthesize their own synthesizing thymidine nucleotides requires 5 to 510 methylene tetrahydrofolate or fh4cho which may be converted into it tetrahydrofolic acid fh4 
is formed from dihydrofolic acid by the action of the enzyme DHFR. So this is the key. Thus, any drug that can inhibit this conversion of FH2 to FH4 through DHFR and thus inhibit the malaria protozoa's biosynthesis of FH2 can selectively inhibit the protozoa's dihydrofolate reductase and can inhibit the growth and kill the bacteria in turn. The drugs in these groups are selective inhibitors of malarial protozoa DHFR inhibitor. Malarial DHFR is 2000 times more sensitive than the mammalian DHFR and this, for this purpose uh, these hitchings, rose and rock et al. they got the Nobel Prize. These drugs are usually reserved for treatment of malaria strains resistant to one or more of the quinoline type of anti-malarials. FH4 synthesis inhibitors are slow acting so used in combination with a quinoline anti-malarial for treatment of acute clinical attacks like trimethoprim chloroquine or trimethoprim uh, amodiaquine can be used. So mechanism of action is drugs act here at the FH2 synthesis or inhibit the DHFR to convert it to FH4 because this actually is important for the synthesis of this important metabolite thymidine nucleotides. So terpenes, terpene lactones, artemisinins, these are obtained from Artemisia I know and Artemisia longa, Chinese, were discovered by Chinese scientists. Uh, they act as blood schizonticides and kill and they cause the clinical cure. Uh, it is a tetracyclic 1 to 4 trioxime nomer endoperoxide, trioxine endoperoxide containing antimalarial drug. Artemether, artether, and artiflin are the synthetic derivatives. The mechanism of action is through carbon free radical mechanism not by reactive oxygen species generation but by virtue of a free radical associated with the endoperoxide hmm, possibly involving a carbon radical the radical in turn produces oxidative damage to the parasitic parasite's membrane artovacone uh, is a chemical compound that belongs to the class of naptoquinones it is a hydroxy 14 naptoquinone it is a hydroxy 14 naptoquinone also called as a ubiquinone and this is a side chain. You can see the parachlorophenyl moiety here. For malaria it is one of the two components along with proglonil in the drug called as maloron. Maloron is marketed by GSK has fever side effects and more expensive than mefloquine. Resistance has been observed. It acts as a blood schizonticide. So friends, uh, we come to the end of this chapter and for uh, practice I have in the end given some um, question banks. So, so far we have, we can say discussed the etiology of malaria in details, the plasmodial parasites, the global picture, the life cycle very much in details based on the chemical structures, the action at the life cycle at various forms and the stages at which act. We have classified the antimalarial drugs in three classes, biological, biological chemical and purely chemical. Then we have discussed the categories of Five antimalarial compounds, five classes we have discussed, particularly they are SARs, and uh, these are the four amino quinolines, eight amino quinolines, the two fold diamino pyrimidines, the quinine methanols, and of course the artemisinin analogs. We also have taken the synthesis of, uh, of chloroquine, uh, amodiaquine. Primaquine, Pamaquine, and Pyrimethamine. And uh, we have also discussed various drugs in details, their structures, their mechanism of actions. So I think uh, you have received quite a good uh, understanding of this.
we have understood some very important uh, terminologies as a radical cure uh, we have seen a clinical cure causal uh, prophylaxis and uh, various other recrudescence relapse etc so i think my effort has been to make things quite clear to you and in the end i have given you some question banks some long answer questions are there particularly this can be for 10 marks discuss the etiology of malaria and life cycle of malarial parasite in details detail the various types of classifications of anti-malarial drugs elaborately discuss the chemotherapy of malaria and discuss the aminoquinoline anti-malarials like the here it is the eight as well as four aminoquinoline anti-malarials there is a synthesis of at least one drugs from each class these are some short answer questions to discuss the SAR of aminoquinoline antimalarials, SAR of DHFR inhibitors, diaminopyrimidine antimalarials, SAR of sesquiterpinolactone antimalarials, mechanism of action of any of the following chloroquine, pyrimethamine, artemisinin derivatives, synthesis of any two chloroquine, primaquine, pyrimethamine and structure of at least one drug from each of the class. So you have to remember the structures, at least seven structures I have asked here and you can actually study more structures. And these are some MCQs with four, four options for you. You have to pick up the correct option and once you practice this lecture properly, you will understand uh, what is the right answer. So, 10 such MCQs are given. So, dear students, I wish you a very happy learning and hope my endeavor is fruitful at the end. Thank you very much. All the best.